we will move on to wrap up uh, this first season of Cowboy Bebop. Uh, we'll do episodes seven through ten. I'll read through. Uh, I'll read through the uh, the show. Uh, it is season one, and it is only going to be season one. Um, yeah. That's one thing that we learned. Um, episode seven: uh, Galio Hustle. A con woman from Faye's past reappears, offering Faye's real identity in exchange for passage to Santo City in a hurry. Julia considers her options. Episode eight: Sad Clown Agogo. Vicious liberates an assassin and contracts him to kill Spike Spiegel. Later, he puts his plan for the elders into motion. Episode 9, Blue Crow Waltz. Years earlier, Spike and Vicious meet Julia at Anna's club. But romantic entanglements and Vicious' amb- Vicious's ambitions soon cause trouble for all of them. And the, uh, I guess, the series finale, Supernova Symphony, Faye and Jet track Spike to Anna's club, only learned that Vicious had kidnapped Jet's daughter, Jet's daughter so he can trade Spike's life for hers. And like I said, uh, you know, unfortunately for this, I, you know, the series was canceled. Uh, just wasn't received particularly well, and that that kind of that happened. But uh, so, Brenton, I'll, I'll go to you on on this. I think the overall thing is, you know, you are definitely more of an expert on this. I, I thought the series was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had no qualms about it. I looked forward to every episode. But for you, uh, as a true uh, Cowboy Bebop, the original uh, series, and now watching this, you know, what were your impressions? I mean, I really liked it. I, I thought it was a case, as I've often said, with a lot of the things that we talk about, it's a case of expectations. If you were looking for a one-to-one of the anime, you were going to be disappointed all along. I think that you had to be open to experiencing these stories in a different way. And I think that unfortunately, a lot of people just wanted a live action retread of, of what had already come before. I, I guess the other thing is the hard the hard part is, is the story elements that were added in were the worst part of the show. So it is, it's difficult to say, well, you need to appreciate it for what it is and not just expect a retread of, of the anime, but then at the same time say, well, the, the things that they added were the worst part. Uh, I thought that overall, the series was at its best when the episodes focused or the, the scenes or the story movements focused on Jet, Spike, and Faye and less so much on Vicious and Julia. If they, I, I do think that this series probably would have lasted another season had they cut a lot of that content, especially, and we get into these episodes, uh, episode nine is a complete original episode. There's, there's very little from that episode that happened on screen in the anime. And I think that that was the episode that a lot of people pointed to and said, we don't want this. And I would agree because I didn't particularly care for that episode. It it was my least favorite episode of all 10. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted it to be over. (laughs) Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. And I, I do think that that's the hard part. They took a chance by adding in some of these story elements for those two characters that that weren't present at least on screen in in the original and I and I think that that hurt them. I think that given the opportunity they could have if they could do it all over again they would spend less time on those characters and maybe more time on fleshing out each individual antagonist from each episode. Because I think that that's where the strength outside of the the core three characters lied was in the antagonist some of the different ones uh the first episode was really close to the episode that mirrors it from the from the anime which is also the first episode of the anime but uh, a lot of times i didn't think that the characters were given much or the excuse me the antagonists were given much of an opportunity to shine through and but when they were able to do that those episodes were the most special and i think that a very good example of that was episode eight sad clown and go-go 
with the clown character who was like completely almost untouchable and presented a a different look or a different challenge for spike specifically so i i thought that you know that those were the episodes that were the best uh supernova symphony was kind of an allegory to the uh, episode five ballad of fallen angels from the anime it's just that you know they recreate they tried they tried very hard to recreate the church scene uh one to one but the element of jet's daughter wasn't present and i felt like that was it added stakes that weren't necessarily there but i also kind of felt like it was unnecessary and then i think the other thing that really turned a lot of people off was at the very end of episode 10 you finally get ed who's one of the core characters in the anime and she he nobody's really sure really what ed's gender is but ed came off as being very annoying in yes. the 30 seconds that ed was on screen whereas that's not necessarily the case in the anime ed is not that annoying uh it's it's crazy <clears throat> how in such a short amount of time the live action character made a, a very bad impression. And I, unfortunately, I think first impressions are everything. And yeah. between Ed, I would say what, what cost this series moving forward was a lot to do with the Vicious and Julia story arc that was kind of added in for context or for, you know, to try to expand the universe a little bit. And the failure to sort of focus on what was really interesting about about the episodes, which was the antagonists and the different ways that they kind of take them down. I'm disappointed that it won't get a second season. However, like, I don't know if Netflix does this, but I wouldn't be surprised if like Prime or Hulu or one of these other streaming services picked it up. Yeah, it's, that would it's a that. hugely <clears throat> popular IP. Right. And it did have in the first week, in the first week, it was the most viewed series on Netflix and it did have over 74 million streams. The popularity trailed off in subsequent weeks. But like I said, I think that I, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think it's going to be soon, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, in a couple of years, maybe Prime or Hulu or even Paramount uh, kind of came in and, you know, pick this up off the garbage heap and try to roll it out again. Do you think, and when you say roll it out again, do you think when you say it that way too, do you mean like just a rehash of doing this whole thing? No, I think that they would, I think that they would start it. I think that, it, I think that the series was strong enough to warrant a second season and it ended on a cliffhanger. So do that, but do it more properly. All right. I think it would be difficult to just kind of erase this from canon because especially because I think the actors that portrayed the three main, main protagonists, Spike, uh, John Cho, uh, Mustafa Shakur as as Jet, which I said in one of the episodes that he he looked and sounded so much like Jet that if you close your eyes, you would have thought that it oh, was yeah. one of the one of the anime episodes. Um, and then uh, Faye played played by uh, Danielle Pineda. The three of them were perfectly fine in their roles yeah I, it would just be i guess it would be difficult to do a continuation of this because then you do have to kind of look at at the vicious and the julia characters and and try to do something with them and i and i do think that that was the weakest part of the series so maybe it is better to just kind of try it all try it all over again but uh i i think that it's that maybe we would be better suited to if if we want to do this live action thing maybe and they are doing this with like um like there's going to be a live action Gundam movie and there's going to be like a Yu-Gi-Oh thing and i think the other one was One Punch Man maybe and that's what Netflix specifically is looking at doing those adaptations but it's this was a hard ask right because this is a extremely beloved classic series. Yeah. You know, maybe they would have been better off choosing something in a similar vein that wasn't necessarily as 
ubiquitously popular as Cowboy Bebop, maybe something like Trigun or something like that. But I, I, I thought that it was good enough to warrant a second season. I am disappointed that it won't get one, but I also do kind of understand why the people that didn't like it didn't like it and which ultimately led to it being canceled. Yeah. And I'll just, I'll just end on my, you know, my final thought on this is I, I walk away with when, when Spike and Faye had any sort of back and forth, I think that was my favorite part in the show. And I wish I could have had like that, the one episode where it's mostly just those two. Yeah. I thought it was like a really just great episode. And I, like you said, I feel like when you have the, the main characters having their snappy back and forth, that was really good. And then having the antagonist, the clown, like you said, I mean, that, that was my favorite of those final four that we went over. I like that episode, but I like the back and forth. I thought the dialogue when that happened was really strong. And then when it wasn't with those three, the dialogue suffered too. And yeah. I didn't you know, and that's me having watched Cowboy Bebop just kind of here and there from the animated series and remembering some, but not remembering a lot of it. Um, so that's, that would be my, my takeaway on, I still liked it fine. I mean, you know, I watched it all and I enjoyed it enough. <laughs> yeah. 